Hello everyone, this is Prem Kumar. After so many years of working in multiple projects, I finally got a chance to work on a Pega Cloud project. I think I can share my take on Pega Cloud experience. First, some basics about Pega Cloud. Decade before, exactly to be precise, in 2012, Pega introduced their Pega Cloud offerings. Normally, as a customer, if we want to host our Pega applications into cloud, we can have our own choice. It can be either Pega Cloud or it can be our own, the client managed cloud. So when we use client managed cloud, we can choose AWS, Azure, Google Cloud Platform, whatever cloud providers we want, we can choose their offerings. But on the other hand, we can also go with Pega Cloud. So what is exactly mean by Pega Cloud? Technically, Pega Cloud is built over AWS. It is like a Pega as a service offerings from Pega Systems. I would not call it as exactly SaaS, but Pega, they provide the service to us. It means we don't want to worry about the infrastructure, the underlying infrastructure behind it. They can use AWS, they can use Google Cloud Platform, whatever they want, they can use. But all we care is about like we get some servers, we can develop our applications, we can concentrate more on just building the applications and Pega will take care of all the infrastructure part. So this is what we get with Pega cloud offerings. Pega do upgrade their cloud offering version. What I meant here is now at this moment, most of the customers would be running the Pega cloud version 2. And currently, Pega also rolled out their next generation, Pega Cloud version 3. Now, the question is, what is the difference between the Pega Cloud version 2 versus Pega Cloud version 3? Before getting into that, let me start with some Pega deployment models on cloud. If you choose any kind of cloud providers, you can have two ways of deployment, normally for a Pega application. You can go with VM-based deployments, it means you choose a VM and then you can deploy your applications over that or you can also use the Kubernetes based deployment. So you can have your containers that can be orchestrated using Kubernetes orchestration. So you can have these mainly these two ways of deployments when you use any kind of cloud offerings. I would say there is a big advantage of using the Kubernetes based orchestration because Kubernetes it takes care of lot of features like it takes care of scalability. It means when the load increases, you can bring up your servers and when the load decreases, you can bring down the servers. So scalability is very well managed by Kubernetes. And then you also have some kind of false tolerance or self healing. Let's say a server goes down, then the Kubernetes, what it will do is there are certain objects that will maintain the state and try to bring up another server. While one server goes down, it will automatically heal it and bring another server up and also you can easily roll out your updates. Okay, now we understood some advantages or differences between the Kubernetes based deployment and VM based deployment. Okay, now let's get back to the point. What is the difference between Pega Cloud version 2, Pega Cloud version 3? Version 2 uses VM based deployments, version 3 it uses the Kubernetes based deployments. Now you know the difference, now you know the advantage, version 3 is more advantageous, right? And Pega just recently launched as I told and in the second quarter of 2023, they are starting rolling out. It means like customers are getting onboarded into Pega Cloud version 3. And another important advantage of Pega Cloud version 3 is, Pega also do support multi-cloud strategy. As I told already, Pega Cloud version 2 and all the Pega Cloud versions were using AWS, right? So technically they use AWS as the cloud provider. Now with Pega Cloud version 3, we can also choose whether we want to go for AWS or we can also use Google Cloud Platform. So that is why I referred as multi-cloud strategy. So Pega now can provide their offerings in both Google Cloud as well as AWS. So we can have a say on that. If your organization is using Google Cloud as the preferred solution, very well you can have your Pega Cloud also on the Google Cloud so that other applications can easily connect and you'll have easy network connections. That's what I meant. And let's talk about the main factor, the cost wise. Definitely it can be beneficiary when you have some kind of Kubernetes based deployments or basically Pega Cloud version 3, definitely it's cost beneficiary. It's like you scale up when needed, scale down,
I also see a small trend that is happening that a lot of organizations who want to use Pega, they are now start to prefer Pega Cloud. I'm hearing this quite often because now with Pega Cloud 3, Pega has a cut over the cost as well as all these maintenance overhead, everything they take care of. So now it is becoming like a mutual beneficiary both for the Pega Cloud as the service provider as well as all the customers. And the final thing is about the newest version of Deployment Manager version 6 which you get with Pega Cloud 3. Okay, so these are some features about the Pega Cloud 3 or in general about the Pega Cloud. Now let me share my experience of working with Pega Cloud. First let me talk about the environments. So Pega Cloud basically they come up with dev test, staging and production. It's like they prefer or they propose us to use three environments, dev, staging and production. But it's not like we are restricted to use only three environments, we can have additional environments. For example, if you are using CDH applications, you may need a different environment that is more tailor made for the CDH frameworks or the applications. Like we have business operations environment, we have production mirror environment. So it comes with a different size or the storage capacity. And also this environment provisioning is dependent on the agreement which the customers makes with the Pega systems. So for an application, all this environment management, right? It's also referred to the standard term route to life. So route to production. So to go to production, what are the environments you need? You can decide on based on your strategic applications. Okay, now let's go to the next topic of connectivity and network connections. There are different options which you can use. You can either use the public internet or you can also have your own private connect. So Pega do provide a lot of options like how you can connect. You may have some kind of resources on your own organization's network. You need to connect to that, right? So there are different options like VPC. You can connect to that using some virtual private networks. So that connection is possible. And then we also have the support portal, right? Normally support portal is for all the Pega customers. And when you are Pega Cloud, you will also have some kind of dedicated tickets coming in. You will have CC tickets for cloud change. You will have CM tickets, cloud management and CAD client advisory I think this is applicable for all the Pega customers but what I meant is you will get some tickets which Pega will say let's say for example you want to have some database maintenance then Pega can roll out some CM tickets cloud maintenance tickets so teams will be aware of it like you may have some kind of downtime so you are aware of it you can plan it you can reschedule it all this cloud infrastructure related stuff it works via the support portal in addition to support portal, we also get my Pega Cloud portal. So this is applicable only for the Pega Cloud customers. So with that, what we can do? We can download the logs. We can restart our servers. We can do some rolling restart and, and then we can also check the details of all our environments. And then about monitoring, PDC. PDC comes with the default. So when Pega provides you some kind of environment, they will make the connection. So you will have your own PDC where you can look into the alerts. What about the logs monitoring? Pega did provide us the Kibana as the monitoring solution as a SaaS offering. So it means like they have their own server where all the logs goes in. Now they already deprecated it. It means we need to host our own monitoring solution. Pega do support using Splunk integration. It means Pega can ship their Pega cloud log entries into Splunk which can be hosted into your own enterprise or it can also put it into some AWS bucket and from that you can stream it into your own monitoring solution. So Pega do support two options but it's a bit disappointment that Pega deprecated their Kibana monitoring solution. The reason for them is scalability of course a lot of customers when they come in it's not that easy or by cost analysis it's not that beneficiary for Pega cloud to maintain all the logs of the customers into their own Kibana solution or the monitoring solution. And also on the security wise they consider it and and they deprecated the kibana monitoring solution and one more important thing we never get the database access if you use on-prem or your client manage pega deployment very well you can easily get into the database right but with pega cloud you can't just log in into the database directly but there is some kind of options let's say if you have the role of database administrator then from the design studio you can use query runner query inspector to write some query and get some results against the database tables 
And so let's say if you need a bulk of data from a DB table, you can very well use the My Support portal. Raise some records. Maybe if you just need CSV data, you can very well get it from Pega Systems. So these are my takeaways from working with Pega Cloud for the last two months. I really learned something new. It's a good experience for me. If you have the similar feel that many organizations are moving towards Pega Cloud, please leave a comment here. Let's have a discussion. I'll see you in the next lecture.